Hey, could you do me a favor? Could you grab the um, the woofer? It's in the seat on the left side. Right side. Right side seat. Up front. Right side. The hand you're right with. You can look at it. Good day, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, super duty. Let's just, let's just get it out of the way. We're working on a super duty. Um, yeah. But we are putting a bunch of Morel stuff in it, which is kind of cool. So we have some of the new Elate Carbons, these guys right here. Uh, this is kind of cool. All right, so this is the Elate Carbon. It's obviously called Carbon because it has a carbon cone. It looks like an Ultimo. Um, it's got a gigantic, look at that. Look at the size of the voice coil in that thing. It's just huge. Um, Neomagnet structure goes all the way has this cool that the gold you're seeing in the mesh is not the voice coil that is the cup that covers the uh the voice coil itself so you don't get any dust or stuff in it big vented pole piece really sexy looking speaker now the cool thing is is this box here next to it let me get this off of here and then they make two tweeters. This is the one that will actually fit in this particular vehicle. They make giant ones if you have lots of them. And then this is the hybrids. And these are the Integra versions of the hybrids. And why this is cool is you can see the difference between an Elate and a hybrid. Let me put the grill. So the grill's uh, just attached to the basket. So it's all, it's all put together. But what makes the hybrids, as you can see, it's the same same basket, but different size motors. So this motor is that silver thing in here. It's much smaller. You can see the voice coil there. It's a smaller voice coil than the Elate by a substantial amount. But they use the Elate basket, and it's called a hybrid because it has a, a different style magnet. It's a dual stack magnet. Um, you can read about it on their website, uh, but they, it's, this why it's called a hybrid because it's, it's between a Virtus and an Elate. It has the, the joys of both, meaning like the motors, you know, the, the size voice calling stuff of like an Elate, but with the bigger aluminum basket. Uh, and it's called an Integra cause the tweeter is, is mounted. That's what they call their coaxials. Oh, I almost had it off. There we go. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You can do it. There we go. Um, but any, anything that has a tweeter inside of it, they don't call it a coaxial, they call it an Integra. And so this is the Integra version of that. And of course, it's bi-ampable, meaning it has the speaker that comes off it and whatnot. So if you want to use it as a bi-amp mode, you can. Um, these are the big crossovers. So lots of fun there. Here is the woofer side. Here is the tweeter side. Uh, these are gonna go on the back door of this. These are the brackets for the back door. And of course, we will be mounting these inside of the door in a place that's safe and out of the way, don't know yet. And then of course, we'll, if we need to, we'll put a clip on it and all that fun stuff. Now these are the brackets for the elates. It's a little bit different than what we normally do. A lot of times put the big piece of plexi and stuff like that. Right now, I'm working on a different design just to see, uh, just just to try something different. And I liked, I've been meaning to try this one. I kind of like the way it looks. This is gonna sit inside of here. We'll use a bigger fast ring to make an eight inch fast ring. So that'll go around the outside of this. The speaker kind of sits flush inside of it. Um, made out of three pieces. So we have two pieces of half inch Centra and one piece of quarter inch ABS. Uh, different materials, different rigidities, just different process altogether instead of just doing a an acrylic piece that, you know, we just wanted to try something different on this one. Uh, the fronts, I'm sorry, the rears are just made out of half inch. Uh, so yeah, this, this is, I don't know, every now and then you gotta spice it up. So the fast ring can go around the outside. We'll use the eight inch fast ring instead of the six and a half inch fast ring. Give it a little bit different, different thing. I don't know, just wanted to try something different today. So these are the speakers that are going in. Hey, and if you want to learn more about Morel, like we talked about these, you can head over to morelhifi.com and check them out. They are a proud sponsor of the show. And yes, that part of it is an ad. 
Um, if you'd like to learn the history of Morel, you can, there again, go to morelhifi.com and they have a whole cool 45th anniversary, like whole little video at the front. It's definitely worth watching. We know how you guys like videos. So power wise, we're getting an audio control D, D6. That's gonna power uh, the tweeters, the mid bass, and then the rears. Uh, and then we have an 800.1 going in a, we got a 210 Fox box that's sitting right there. It's getting two Alpine R-Type 10s with grills to go in. The R-Types fit wonderful in the Fox boxes. Uh, we'll put, of course, a little bass knob right here for the audio control, so it'll have that. Uh, it has the giant touchscreen in it, but it is boss and acoustic. Uh, we'll make a little Morel logo that goes up here. Um, you say Boston? I'm sorry, Bang and Olsen. There you go. Starts with a beat, it's close enough. Fernando is already sound dampened the doors themselves. So this is a sheet and a half of Stinger Roadkill. So you have this at the inside, um, all done up on that side. Uh, I did the rear doors already. He's way ahead of schedule. Uh, but I know he's going to get slowed down now. Uh, so this is the back door. And what he's working on over here is the actual door panel itself. Just like that. Just like that. This is a little bit different. This, of course, has the butyl, the metal, and the foam. We like to use this on the door panel. It's a little bit heavier. Adds weight. And, of course, the foam, when it's touching the metal on the other side, which it does touch, it doesn't rattle or squeak or do all that because believe it or not this door panel touches right on to here so adding that extra is pretty nice um, these have dents in them so the door panel actually pushes into this now as far as the amplifier and the mount goes already I did that this morning so there's our Zen A to B and our two amplifiers this board we didn't make this board this is a board from uh the good guys sound good sound what are they called sounds good. sounds good sounds good out of tennessee makes this board uh, uh so he ordered this it's pretty nice it's it's made out of half inch which and this application is fine if you have the premium audio that has the bracket here you do have to relocate it down into so you got to cut this i think we did a video on it where you cut this out you mount it down in low luckily this doesn't have this because it's a 250. Uh, i think that's only on the f-150s or the really 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 super expensive f-250s um uh no this uh, i don't think this is abs i think this is more like hpe whatever that one is um because it definitely it's not abs it's just it's because it doesn't cut like ABS. It's not thick like ABS. Um, but either way, sounds good out of Tennessee makes this. They have aluminum brackets that go here. That's what's missing. So there's an aluminum bracket that goes here. There's one that goes here. And there's another one that goes down here. Uh, and then, hold on, let me see. Hey, Fernando, can you come hold this for a second? Ow. Apparently, I want to rip my shirt. Here, hold this for a second. I want to grab. No, just the phone. I need to get this out of here. So, ah. So what I wanted to show you guys is for this, we are using the uh, Stinger Select fuse holders. Hold on, let me grab the other cover. Oh, wow. So these snap on like this, in the right direction. And if you notice, there's no screws that are holding them in place. I wanted to get them as tight as I could, so I've sanded the feet off of them and it uses an m4 uh, bolt that holds it together there's actually three of them so on the bottom we've added we drilled it countersunk them and when i'm done i'll put a piece of something over this to so that these don't act i mean there's carpet and everything so the likelihood of them touch i'm still gonna put something over it but these are uh so we we've actually attached the distribution blocks to uh the panel uh, this hole is for the A to B power and the A to B uh, USB that connects up to the Zen, the Zen yeah. piece. You want to put uh, LEDs in there and glow everything? No. Oh. Uh, I did take the cover off and flip it around so that the Zen goes the right direction. Um, and then, 
Sub amp always goes on the driver's side. Highs amp always goes on the passenger side, just because of the way the signals are gonna run. Speaker wires will all go out. Actually, the speaker wires are all gonna hang out back here. It's just force of habit. So the RCAs will come and attach to this. One update they just did on the Zen module. Um, the Zen module will do 12 channels and yeah. no one ever uses it for 12 channels. Originally, it was supposed to have a DSP software that you could buy. See, like if you look at it, it says DSP 12A to B. So they were supposed to offer DSP software so that you could just pay and flash it as a DSP. I, I guess that never happened, but either way, this would always come with 12 RCAs on it and what would, you, you typically remove the ones you're not using because you really need front, rear, sub, and maybe center. So now I'm guessing because for one, copper is super expensive and two, it's really hard to get parts. They're finally making it with just front, rear, center, sub, or you're ordering it this way. I'm sure you can still get it with the others if you need it, but we never used it that way. So I'm kind of excited that they took off. You know, this is much easier. Cause you imagine twice as many of these, it's really hard to deal with. Six channels only. Yep. So that's kind of nice. I like that they did that. Uh, this will have two zero gauge oh, up here. This will have two zero gauge coming out of it. Uh, I did cut this. This is not what this doesn't come cut. Uh, the reason for that is the car sits, the panel in the car sits right here. And I like to run the wire across the bottom. So there were, it was gonna be really hard to get zero gauge to turn that quick. So I notched this. That's why I don't think this is ABS because it doesn't cut like ABS. ABS is a lot more rigid and dangerous to work with. Um, so pretty cool there. Uh, and then one nice thing, like, you know, I typically like to make this out of quarter inch ABS just because I like the room between the seats. Right uh, there, you can see the logo. Oh yeah, sounds good. Yeah. But they, it comes with these aluminum mounting brackets. So one of them goes up behind here and then these go here and here. So it's kind of cool. They did a nice job. Yeah. Sage and the guys over there did a really nice job. So that's pretty cool. Um, good on them. We'll put those in when we're done. Yeah. So this is this is gonna power it. I think that's that's pretty much it, man. Yeah. I don't think I think we got we covered everything that's happening here today. Yeah. Um, if you guys caught today's install diaries, hope you enjoyed it. A um, couple things about that that I'll let you guys in on a secret. So we shot that video back in 2020, and now it's 2022. And obviously, if you didn't know the year, um, I don't. It just got left behind. Uh, someone complained that, oh my gosh, another kicker key video. If you paid attention in the video, we kind of talked about why we went with the kicker key. Uh, it's not uh, paid for. It's not anything like that. It was just a video we shot two years ago. And last night I was like, you know what, let's, I was just going through inventory, trying to clean out any clutter that we have, uh, some things that just didn't get edited. And that was one of them. So uh, you guys get that for the next couple of weeks of fun and excitement as far as that goes. Um, yeah. But one of the things in that is we're using a Metro harness for the DSP, which they no longer make. Nice thing is, is there are other versions of that available now. So IData makes one now pack makes one you probably can't get it yet but so there's other and, and there's a clip in the video which lists all these companies that you can go find this stuff at um so something something to think about there uh and, and as far as like doing a, key, a kicker key video like the key is a relevant product it really is um especially the key lock uh which is what we're going to be concentrating on next week when we go to knowledge fest that's right next week is knowledge fest oh my gosh um we spent last night here uh, planning our display that we're building for them, which hopefully I'll have time to build here in the next couple of days. Uh, thinking of getting the Kicker Key or Alpine PWD X5 for the Kia Nitro LX Hybrid, what would you recommend? There again, it all just depends on what you're trying to do. Tommy, who? Oh boy. Um, just depends what you're trying to do, man. It, it, I, I think we all, we've all followed along long enough that it's, if the key is what you need, great. If the key isn't what you need, I mean, it, it depends. Are you planning on fixing the signal? Are you? Do you like the way it sounds? Does it have a premium audio system? Key isn't made for premium audio. A key lock is made to fix a premium audio system, but it just depends. Just used a key lock recently for the first time, and that thing is a game changer. Oh, man, I'm telling you. 
the display we're building for it. Here, I'll, okay, I'll let you guys in on a secret. Should I let them in? Should we yeah, just wait? They, yeah, they, they're not going to go, so... Yeah, because a lot of you guys we know aren't going to this, so what we're going to do is we're going to build this awesome display, uh, which I'm sure we'll take a picture of. But the problem is, is you know, we need to be... We're going to demo how a key lock works. Uh, this is a key lock right here, this little tiny cool thing. Uh, it has an RTA built into it right here. Um, but we're actually going to use... Uh, this JBL amplifier, the eight channel JBL amplifier, this little sexy thing here is going to be hidden up underneath our display. And the reason that is gonna be there is so that we can have uh, DSP and totally jack up the signal and then look at it. We're gonna use an IRTA too. So we'll have that connected to an iPod that's gonna screencast to the big monitor that's behind us, which we just had to figure out how to do this morning. Um, and we're going to show you the before and after why we do it live in the class. So we're going to, we're going to have a blast. And then we're also going to do a key 501 and show you how that fix all that nonsense. Uh, how do the jail fix and the key lock differ trying to fix factory radio issues for front and rear with fade? If you wanted to do front and rear with fade, you'd have to do two key locks because it's only for two channels. Um, the key lock is capable of fixing more issues than the fix was. The fix will do a lot, but the fix, it, the fix is not as, it's, in some ways it's more advanced, in some ways it's less advanced. If you just want it to go in and, and do the job and walk away from it, the key lock is going to do it. If you have, you can have up to three all pass filters and it'll find them and turn them off if you don't want them, not turn them off. It'll just do what it needs to do to get rid of them if you don't know what an all-pass filter is i understand just know that if you have a nissan if you have a toyota you got an all-pass filter um and even some of the american cars are starting to come the way and it'll just take care of it for you uh it can fix up to 12 12 db plus or minus so if you have severe base roll off it can go in and fix that and i don't mean i shouldn't say base roll off i should say like actively crossed over uh, it can go in and fix that uh, it could, it's amazing what it can do automatically. You just hit buttons and let it do its thing. Um, you don't have to get involved in it. Now, keep in mind, you're making the signal flat, all right? Which means if you're not going to a DSP of some kind afterwards, you're going to be disappointed because you're literally taking away everything that the, that the system is doing to make the car sound as good as it is now. So... All of these devices are with the idea that you're trying to get it flat so you can then do your own DSP work on top of it. If you're not planning on doing a DSP, you might want to leave it alone and just amplify it. Okay, I know that sounds weird. And, oh, well, we well, because it's the signals orderly. Every radio, every aftermarket, every factory radio has some form of an EQ done on it. And it's there to make the car sound better, whether you like it or not, whether you think you're smarter than the sound engineers that designed it, it's there for a reason. And if you put a device like a fix or a key in there, there the thought behind it is that you're going to go in and then tune it the way you want to tune it. If you don't plan on doing that, just get a standard LC7i and, and hook it up and go. Um, or get an LCQ1 and just boost and cut manually the frequencies that you feel you need to cut. Um, so there is there is some caveats. You have to understand what you're doing uh, because you could actually make it sound worse uh, just because you're, you're taking away all the life of it and they're expecting you to use a second device to put it back in. Um, hey, Morel, you missed it, man. We were talking all about the elates and the hybrids and we we're showing the difference between the two. And where were you, man? Where were you? Oh, and hi. Hi. Um, how do you set gains on aftermarket subs with a factory stereo? Same way you would with an aftermarket stereo, really. Um, you play a test tone, and if you have some form of distortion detector, you can use that. If the amp has some form of distortion detector, use that. Uh, if you're going to do it just using voltage, you set it like that. You play a 40 hertz test tone at negative 5, negative 10. Uh, the thing is, is a lot of people get worried like, oh, what is it going to do to my factory speakers? Most factory speakers have some form of an active EQ in them that is limiting that amount of bass to it. Uh, the other thing, too, is, you know, they say two-thirds volume. You, you're going to, if you can't figure out where the factory radio distorts, then you're just going to have to assume you're going to put it at two-thirds volume, meaning if it goes up to 
38, you're going to play it to 32 or 31, or, and that's as loud as it's going to get. So you have to decide where, you have to listen to decide where your distortion point is. And you can do that with your ears. I mean, there's definitely a change when you're turning up the volume. You go, oh, yeah, that doesn't sound good anymore. So turn it back to the, the highest volume you have it at that sounds good, and then you can, from there, play your test tone, set your gains, and move on. Um, whether you, Like I said, you have multiple ways to do it. Does the passenger get less quality sound than the driver when time alignment is played? Actually, no. When you're sitting in the passenger seat, and, and trust me, every time I demo a car, I'm sitting in the passenger seat so that I know exactly what it sounds like. It sounds to them just like I me. Mean, EQ-wise, it sounds great. It's, they're getting all the benefits of the EQ. Um, but to them, it sounds just like it did before you got the stereo. So, like, if you go hop into your passenger seat right now and turn it on, chances are the sound coming from you know right in the corner of the window maybe over two inches it's going to sound just like that nothing changes because they're really only getting that sound and to them it's the loudest speaker next to them so that's all they hear so to them it just what did you do what do you mean what i do i mean it sounds louder but i mean it sounds okay but that's it that's all they're getting they're not getting the benefit of a center image or something like that to do that you need an up mixer you need a center channel you need all this extra stuff so um, a lot of money you're going to spend to get okay stuff, and yeah, anyways. Will the A to B module work with the 2022 F-150 that has the BO Unleashed system? It's f okay, so as far as I know, the answer to that is yes, because I don't think it has changed. Um, for that, though, you may want to make sure you get the 12 channel. Um, Here's here's what makes the BO system the BO system is this blue cable right here This this is what does that um, If it has this then that's a to B because this is where all the a to B happens This is this is literally everything. There's this and then on this plug right here This plug there's two data wires these it's these uh, the gray it's either the gray purple or the green on the other side I don't remember which side is which but these are your two can high can low or data wires that it uses to control the a to b uh, and then on this plug here it just gets power from so if it has these plugs then yes it should work however however uh, the plugs might not match up i would give nav tv a call and just ask them i can guarantee you they've already dealt with it um i've sat in the unleash system like uh who was it uh msc uh the guys from helix had an unleashed F-150 at Knowledge Fest that they did with a full Helix system in it. Master Tech. Master Tech Expo. What did I say? Knowledge Fest. Okay, my bad. Sorry, Master Tech Expo. Um, that was Brian, by the way. Just smacked me in the face. Um, and they put a ton... They put... What did they... Did they do Brack speakers? No, not... I mean... Um, no, they do Blam speakers. They did the Blam speakers all the way around. Helix. Uh, Helix big big yeah. multiple helix amplifiers dsp and all that fun That's stuff great. so i just give nav tv a call and ask them they'll know for sure but if it has that blue connector you're probably in luck uh and there again if you're going to go full dsp then front rear sub is probably all you need thanks i learned more t i lean more towards elton because it has built-in subwoofer subwoofer dsp and a four channel amp um in my research, they do not recommend more than a 30 amp draw from the battery due to car being a hybrid, I'm assuming. Okay. The key lock, uh, another amp you could look at if you want something with a full DSP and five channel and all the fun of that, check out the match. Like, match. Is it spelled match? M A T M A T M A. Yeah, you get it. Match. M A T C H. C H. Yeah. Yeah, yeah match. The match line. They make a whole bunch of five channel, six channel, eight channel, seven channel, full DSP, miniature, low amperage draw amplifiers that are really freaking amazing. I mean, they make a five channel amplifier that is about the size of the Zen module. It's I, th I think it's actually smaller than the Zen module. Um, so something to check out also. The key lock has RCA outputs. How much voltage does the output have? I believe it's up to 10 volts of output if you need it. Low level? Yeah. Yeah, it's up to like 10 volts. Um, in the voice of Chris, in the voice of Chris Rock, they pay for all this money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Late to the party. It's okay, man. 
All right, let's let's. I'm I'm sorry. I'm gonna pass over some of you guys. YouTube challenge: the ultimate Walmart system under a thousand bucks. Go for it. I don't shop at Walmart. Nothing against them. I just can't go into Walmart. It, it irritates me. It causes me pain. Um, it's, it's not that I just I can't do it. There's just I get anxiety when I walk in there, and I'm just like I gotta get out of this place. Um, I don't know. The, the, the girls laugh. I wait in the car. I just can't go inside the place. It just it's just I don't know. I just it's like going into a church. I just feel weird. And you know, so. I had to go in there the other day looking for that car, and I about passed out. I was like, I got to get out of here. The walls are coming. Around. I was just like, I'm out. I didn't want to buy anything. Even if they had it, I was like, I got to leave. Um, yeah. All right, now I can go back. Uh, can you suggest a shallow woofer which can sound similar to the JL-10W? Why not just go with the JL? I mean, okay. So I'll uh, the L7, the Kicker L7T. L7T is an awesome shell mount. Works in a tremendously slow, uh, small box. Um, I would, I would probably go that way. Um, uh, do you trust the DD1 over the clip light on an amp? I've seen the two distort at different volume levels. Uh, they're looking for two different things. They're looking for two different things. So, uh, one, you know, the DD1 is a distortion detector. One could be a clip detector. Uh, they're so in there again, patents and whatnot, and what percentage of distortion or clip they're looking for. So yes, they can they can definitely come on at different times depending on what is happening. Tony swears by his piece. We've used his piece. We've used the ones that are built into the amplifier. At the end of the day, use something. I don't care what it is. You know, lights of light. If you're if you're running your system at the ragged edge, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just beating the shit out of it turn it down okay because it's just you know i don't know where where all of a sudden the feeling that i have to get every 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 bit of power every out of my amplifier came from um really don't need to i mean just get good stuff get it at a comfortable listening level and then play it everyone is so worried about like how loud it's like no man just stop worrying about stuff like that just get good stuff and listen to it at normal listening levels or a little bit higher listening levels. I mean, we don't have to run our equipment to the ragged edge all the time. It's it's just kind of silly. I don't I don't know where that became such a thing. Uh, it won't hurt the factory speakers. No, because they're they're again they're not going to be playing that frequency. We're it's back to when we were talking about playing the 40 hertz test tone. I mean, don't camp out there all day playing 40 hertz for like 10 minutes. Uh, what we do is Fernando sits in the front. I'm in the back. I have my finger on the gain. Uh, he plays the track. I set the gain. The light comes on. I tell him he turns it off. I mean, it's not like they're going to sound like 12-inch woofers and go, bah! I mean, the litter's like, Bruh! you know, they're not really getting a lot of sound. If you look at the output of a factory stereo on an RTA, if you have an IRTA2, you can do that, by the way. That's the IRTA2, the electrical RTA test that you can perform. It's a little red box. It's pretty awesome. Uh, you find that DNF tool drawer, and you can see the curve. And you can go to 40 hertz, and you can see that there's not a lot of energy at 40 hertz in these cars. So you're going to turn your gain up. And pray to God that there's enough there that the amplifier can play enough bass to make everybody happy. Especially in a Honda Accord. Uh, don't see Helix products any reason? Um, no. I mean, we have Helix. Uh, what's the website? Is it just MSC uh, America? MSC America. Yeah, I go to MSC America. It's Audio Tech Fisher is the parent company. So you might have to look for Audio Tech Fisher uh, because Helix is... There's three companies that they own. One is Match, one is Helix, and the other one is Brax. Yeah, so they all Helix. fall Helix. under... Oh, no. It's not Helix.com. Yeah, so you could type in Helix Car Audio, and that would probably come up. But MSC. audio. if you go to MSC America, it should come up, or if you go to Audio Tech Fisher. Uh, can you suggest a... Sh okay, got that one. Saw so Pioneer release the new NEX 86. Looks like the 8600 with no remote. Do you have favorite 10.1 inch 11 inch radios i haven't had a chance to look at the 86 you're probably right it's probably the exact same radio as the previous model um different number different number uh you know each one of those floating screens has the things you love and the things you hate about them um pioneer is pretty easy to assemble 
but then it has that stupid USB sticking out of the back of it that's going to break off and cause you headaches. I don't know if they fix that on the 86. I hope so, but I'm not holding my breath. Uh, Alpine is kind of a monster to, to assemble. However, at the end of the day, it looks really cool and it's got a lot of new features that are pretty awesome. Um, you know, it's Kenwood's like a, 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 a rock. Uh, and there again, it's easy to assemble. Um, I haven't really, we haven't had a chance to play with the Sony as far as assembling it goes, but it's got a lot of nice features. So there's, there's you know, and the easiest one out of them all to assemble is the, the Stinger High 10. I mean, yeah, there's is just like, it just clips on. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. Um, last time I walked into church, it almost caught, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I had to go to a funeral like two or three weeks ago. Um, and it was in a church and we had to go through a whole mass I have nothing against religious people. For a long time, my mom made us be religious. Um, it, it doesn't bother me, but walking into the church was very... It was like, oh, this, I, oh man, I'm in a Walmart. Crap. Um, no, I'm not. It's, it was just... It was just, like, it was very weird. It was a very uncomfortable feeling and just, you know... I'm, I, mean, I know at some point everyone has that feeling and it just... And, of course, the obvious answer to that would just go to church more, but... Yeah, hey, whatever works for you. Whatever makes you happy, whatever gets you through the day. Uh, you do what works for you, and I respect the rights of everyone to do what they need to do. Uh, is the Alpine Type R12 better than the Alpine S12? Even though they rate, even though the Type S has a higher sensitivity. It has a higher sensitivity because it's got a smaller motor structure. It's a stamped steel basket as opposed to a, uh, a uh, aluminum. Um, no, the Type R is a way louder, way better, higher power handling. Uh, speaker, it just has a nicer sound to it altogether. They both, they they both sound good. Um, you know, the S type, R type, typically aren't disappointed either way. We lean more into the R type mainly because of the power we're typically putting on them, and people just, you know, I want the bigger, beefier built speaker just because I know people are mean, mean to their stuff. Uh, Twelve TW three or Sundown. Oh man, I, I you know. Mm. When it comes to shallow mount woofers and you have JL in there, and I'm assuming the TW3 is a shallow mount, it's like JL wins every time. Every time JL will win. It's, it doesn't matter who I'm comparing it to. Yeah. JL's going to win every time. I mean, yeah, is, you know, if you say a kicker or JL, I'm still going to pick JL because they just, that's their thing, they man. They know how to make shallow speakers. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, 95 dB or 85 dB is all you need. I mean, unless you got a tweeter, which you need 107, right? Joking. Uh, be safe out there with all the this rain and storms coming Friday. Yeah. Is there a storm coming Friday? Oh, Has it? I mean, it's been raining ever. Really? Yeah. God, I Where you been? That. I don't watch the news. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, I don't, so We're now. Close on Friday. Cause... Yeah, we need to. I'm down. Um, <laughs> I don't watch the news anymore. I really don't. Oh, for now, what's up, buddy? Yeah, it's 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 rough. Yeah, but, it is rough. Well, even when I'm editing, I don't even have the TV on anymore. Why don't you? Why don't you pioneer? Why don't you? I'm guessing like Pioneer Stereos. I want to understand the reasoning. I'm trying to decide between the. Okay, it's not that I don't like the operating system. I don't. It, it, okay, so take all that out of this. Okay, the operating system is sound. The sound quality is good. What I look at is not what you're looking at, right? Yeah. You put one in, you figure it out, you get into your car and you rock on. When I look at a Pioneer, I, it's not that they're bad. It's just that when I have to do things that don't make sense to me and it's questionable on whether or not it's going to stay, meaning like, a, like for example, when you, like we've shown the back of a Pioneer enough to where that micro USB or the, the USB-C sticks out of the back of the radio a good inch. All right. I don't have a lot of room in a dash, let alone some flimsy ass USB C sticking out of the back of a radio that I then have to make a whole nother mount for. I have to fix their problem. I have a problem with that. Um, to me, that's poor design and I have to fix it. So that's what irritates me. It's not that like once it's in and you're using it, you'll never know any of this. The problem to you, is good. you'll just be, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. I love the way this looks. I mean, they have one of the cleanest looking floating screens. Mm -hmm. I love the way their screen looks. It's tight. It's thin. It's got the chrome thing around it. It looks sexy as hell. Yeah. But I'm jaded because I just had to put it in your dash and I had to fight to get it in there. I don't like doing that. Maybe I'm lazy now because I'm getting old. I don't know. But... Um, when it comes to using a radio, the Pioneer operating system works one way, 
the Kenwood works one way, the Alpine, and so they all have different operating systems. You have to sit and, and find a car stereo shop, Best Buy, something like that, and play with that and see if it makes sense to you. Because like, if you get into a piece of software and you just can't wrap your head around it, then it's just a bad user experience. I mean, keep in mind, we, we have to use them all. Uh, it's, I had to sit with an Alpine when we showed that one last week. I sat there for five minutes trying to find the supple for volume control. Yeah. Because it was buried. I had to hit another button to find it. I was, that was just like, that's dumb. Um, but hey, you know, it's just, now I know. So uh, that's it. It's, it's nothing against Pioneer. It's just how they make the unit. Now, if they fix that on the new unit, which I know they didn't fix it on that one, then perfect. No problem. We're in love again. We're in love again. We can go out. We can be friends. Is the DSP on the audio control amp good? It's the exact same DSP that comes on every audio control. So uh, whether you buy a DM608, whether you buy a D61200, it's the same software all the way through the board. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, is, it a good, is it a good software? I know how to use it. I like using it. Um, so I'm going to go with yes. What, what do you got? Oh, fine. Jeff's coming. Smith? Yeah. All right, hold on. Right there, you you passed them. Did I pass them? Yeah, right there. Uh, they said convertible Mustangs are being banned in Florida on the news. <laughs> I figures I just paid it off, so <laughs> you know, let's ban it. I mean, ban. hey, you know, it's my midlife crisis car, so not really, but I just always wanted a convertible. Yeah. He's just a hater. <laughs> yeah. You know, we we all can't drive. What Toyotas. are you gonna say? The Hondas preludes are. I mean, Honda Preludes are for you know, Toyota Camry. questionably uh, straight guys. Joking. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> uh, broke off the first one of those, putting it in. And you're talking about the USB-C on the back of Pioneer. Everybody breaks them off. Everybody breaks them off. We didn't break them off because we looked at it right away, and my overactive imagination said, this is going to break off, and this is going to cause a problem. I can't have that. So we immediately manufactured something to fix it. Um, and I don't like doing that. I just think it's a bad I Like, think this shit through, people. Um, hey, you know, it just happens. It's okay. Yeah, one day we'll get it right. Um, I had two of them go bad on mine. All right, so these are people. These are these are not. these. There you go. So these are people talking about Pioneer. Send an email to Pioneer.com. Yeah, you know, and don't get me wrong. I say this knowing that someone from Pioneer will probably hear this and get pissed at me. And that's okay because... That means that somebody at Pioneer knows that, that I'm mad, you've had stuff that breaks, fix the problem. Because there are a lot of people that love Pioneer. I mean, we started a whole YouTube channel on reviewing Pioneer. I love Pioneer. No pain. But I don't like stuff when it's wrong. And, yeah. and not everyone can do smart stuff all the time. I get it, but that's just dumb. Um, and this has this kind of turned into a to jam on Pioneer thing. and It's, it's not, it's not. It's just that one problem, man. <laughs> that one thing. And you know, it's funny because when you look at the new Kenwood stuff, they went out of their way to make sure that they didn't do that. Like all their new, all the new stuff in the new 9 Series Kenwood that's coming out, the new short chassis, is all that stuff is countersunk into it, man. Like a good, like it, it yeah. goes into the radio. They the even USB. give you like a lot for that. Yeah. For the so they, they were like, uh uh-uh, uh, no, man. <laughs> we know, uh uh-uh, uh, we're not making that mistake. Uh, I had a Pioneer, but we'll never again. And they're getting not to hate on Pioneer. No. It's just one thing they do. Uh, well, it's two because it's the USB-C and the micro HDMI. It's, it's, it's just dumb. It's just, it's just dumb. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. One day we'll get what we want. Um, all right. So before you guys end this, before we go away, if you guys have not entered to win this, uh, this guy here. Oh, not me. I mean, if you guys haven't entered to win this yet and you're saying, wait, what? I could possibly win this Focal Act. Uh, auditor 10 inch driver that's signed by Dean, Fernando, and soon to be Haley, um, that was starred in the video that we did on the auditor install in the install diary. I'm sorry, in the install lab, car stereo lab, whatever mm-hmm. it's called. Um, car stereo lab and Haley's car. Uh, we're giving this away. Uh, this we're giving away because, in for one, it was uh, Focal's uh, first quarter they advertised with us and they've just signed up to advertise with us again. And we're pretty excited about that. And to celebrate that, we're giving away this woofer. Um, Whether you want to put it on a shelf and just let it sit like this, I recommend. Or if you want to play it in your car, there is no warranty. It is, it is, you own it. Uh, And if you saw the video at the very end, you saw there was smoke that came out of this. 
Okay, it did smoke. It does play. It does play. It was an Ailey's car for a good two weeks. Um, but if you want to win this, go to Focal America here on Instagram. Take a follow. Take a screenshot of you following it. And email me at D and F Christmas at yahoo.com. D and F Christmas at yahoo.com. Screenshot of you following Focal America. That's all I need. Uh, and we're going to draw this Saturday, and you could win. One entry per email. That's it. But you have until Saturday to enter. We're going to draw it on the live show that we do Saturday night. So that's that, and thanks, Focal, for sponsoring the show. Um, that's it. That's all we got. You ready? Yes. All right, guys. You guys have a great rest of your day. We'll see you later next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you, sir. Oh, yeah. That's what I live for. I just tucked that out of the way. Yeah, tuck that out of the way, too. I'll deal with that. You need a light? Or yeah, you can that would be great. Let's say, you can see in the dark. It's pretty impressive. There you go. Light. All right, guys. So we're back at the F-250 today. Good afternoon. How are you? So this is the Carbon Elate from Morel in the door. Uh, we went with a... For this, we used a six by nine fast ring because it was a little bigger because we made the dual mount that we showed you guys yesterday. Um, so Fernando's like, I think I need a bigger spacer. We looked at the eight inch, the eight inch was too big. Mm -hmm. So the six by nine fit the best. Yeah. So that is in there and you can get to the speaker. Not that we should ever have to. Um, so that's done. This is the last speaker. And then I just finished up the tweeters, so these are the light tweeters mounted in. It's three pieces of stacked acrylic. Got that into place. I have my ends on here waiting to get that put in. Uh, base knobs waiting to go in. Here's our little base knob panel that'll go into the car next once he gets the power wire in. Uh, let's take a look in the back here. So this is the Fox box. Fox box is in. Fits really nice. Honestly, I think it fits better in here than the F-150 box does. Uh, this, I mean, it, it fits really cool. Looks good. Um, hang on, let me do this. Ah. And then the amplifiers are in place and all set and ready to go. So power wires ran. Speaker wires are run. Um, for the most part, this plugs in back here except for the two tweeters uh, because in the F1 F series excursion or expedition F series trucks the radio actually powers the tweeters uh, Dean do you think the clear plastic indoor a passive radar maybe no I mean it so all right so this is not no so this is just a rain guard um, but when you look at the back side of the door panel the door panel sits on this pretty flat so this doesn't move a lot. It's they're pretty tight up against the door. Um, even when we put, like we were showing yesterday, this um, our plastic. The I mean the sound treatment we put on literally sits on top of this. So yes, we we can make a whole panel that goes over this. In some cases, I don't know. That's that's one of those debates. Uh, this is a pretty thick plastic. Like I said, it's up against the door panel. The whole idea is just to keep the water out of the door. Um, but it does look sexy though, doesn't it? Like, man, that carbon fiber. Fiber, carbon fiber. So, sexy and nice. Um, the Integra's went in the door back here. Uh, passive crossovers, he made it. I wish I should have kept it up. Did you take a picture of your passive crossovers? Uh, yeah. Okay, so he took a picture of that. So. The past crossovers, you made a bracket mount over here. Uh, that Zen was... All right, hold on. What do you got? Zen was that and audio control. So this is the Zen. This is Zen A to B. So this is what's talking to the A to B network in the car. Uh, 
because this was a Ford BO, uh, so this is Nav TV, and then that goes over to the audio control D5, I'm sorry, D6 1200. That is powering the Elite tweeters in the dash, the Elite mids in the front doors, and the uh, hybrid Integras in the rear door. And then this has uh, six channel out, so you have front, front, rear, tweeter, I'm sorry, front, rear, center, sub, and so this is getting front, rear, sub into it, and then the sub goes out and feeds the LC 1.800. I like to use the base knob for the LC 100, the ARC, ACR1, not the ACR3, because I, I, I just want a sub for level control. I don't need anything else, so I like to use this base knob. To me, it works works fine um it does what i want it to do uh the only wires that run up front obviously aside from the zero gauge power ground and the base knob is there's two tweeter wires that go up this side of the car and go to those tweeters that we showed you earlier what's up jeffrey oh there you go right there oh yes yeah, so there you go so there's there's a picture of that crossover abs plate riveted into spots Looking all sexy. Um, are we doing F-150s with the good old audio control amp set? All right, this is actually an F-350, so close enough. I mean, they're all the same, but yes, with the old audio, audio control set. Uh, we do a bunch of them. Um, I have a question off topic. I have a Pioneer deck running into an audio control DM608. I have to put my EQ on the deck all the way down to tune if not, my mids are incredibly loud. So make sure you go into, everything should be flat. Uh, default out of the box for Pioneer is powerful. So you kind of got to go through and um, if, <sighs> personally what I would do is I'd start, if it's not fresh out of the box, I'd restore the radio back to default settings then I go into the EQ settings and shut them off, uh, put it back to flat. From there, you should play pink noise and look at your input RTA on your DM608. If it's not flat, then you, you know you increase the range if you need to, but see if it, what, what's going on on your input, because if it's not flat, then that would be a problem with the Pioneer sending it a weird signal, which Pioneer shouldn't send the, it a weird signal. It should be a flat signal coming out of the Pioneer. Um, so, yeah. Now, you might be getting some, like, off the glass or weird location in the car or bad crossover points, but... Resonance. <laughs> yeah, resonance. But, no, that, that shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't be... You shouldn't have to turn the EQ... I mean, shouldn't, zero should be a fine point. It should be flat. Um, but you can see that with the input RTA on the DM608. Uh, I used to have some old punch XLC12s back in the day. Uh, then the bass was amazing. Now I have new Rockford gear, and I can barely hear any bass from rap songs I used to hear. Any advice on what I can do? Well, there's a lot of things that could be wrong with the thing. For one... Are we using one sub or two? If you're using two subs, are you sure you don't have them backwards? Uh, you know, out of polarity. I know it's, it's like a rookie thing, but it happens all the time. So obviously if you're, I mean, if you're just not getting loud enough bass, it, it, there's a lot of things that can go into this. Like what kind of box do you have? Uh, sealed, ported. Uh, is it the right box for the woofers? Um, what kind of car did you have back then that you have now? Some like, you know, did you have a hatchback and now you have a sedan? Uh, or did you have a Tahoe? Or, you know, so there's a lot of things that are going to change the way the bass sounds. It's not just like history. Um, nostalgia is wonderful, but yes, there, there, there should still, the, the subwoofer hasn't changed that much to where the music isn't going to be big and booming. Um, the other thing, too, that you may want to think about adding to it is if you just can't get the sound that you want, um, is an epicenter. The other thing, too, because that'll make that music boomier. Um, the other thing, too, is like I go back and I listen to some Run DMC or I listen to some LL Cool J. Uh, and this stuff had a ton of bass back in the day. And 
it it's, doesn't seem as bassy as it did back in the day. And, and the reality is, is the music now is way more loudness, way boomier, um, just it's totally different. So, uh, you know, when we when you listen to like Run DMC on a timeline system, um, it sounds like it's this wide. And you're like, whoa, what the hell? Uh, just because it was recorded like crap. But back then we weren't doing those kind of things. So you got a weird, different sound to it. Um, epicenter, put it in, fat bass again. So, what's up, Johnny? Uh, Fernando is being creative. He has a great mentor. Thank you. And Fernando thanks you too. Say thank you, Fernando. Thank you, Fernando. Oh, good God. Um, use RTA to find if it's got huge roll off in signal. Yes. <coughs> and that's the cool thing about the DM608, the DMA10, or any one of the audio control. Uh, you have the input RTA, which is an electrical RTA that will tell you what the signal looks like. So just play your pink noise and figure out wh what is going on. It, it should be flat. Coming out of the Pioneer, with everything turned off, it should be flat. There is one other setting on the Pioneer um, that, yeah, what is it called? What is that silly EQ? Uh, there's one more setting on a Pioneer deep down on the, on the audio page. You know, like that one thing that comes with like mode one, mode two, and off. It always comes at mode one. It's like supposedly their harmonic, like yeah, MP3 um, correction software crap. I just don't, I don't know what it's called, but it always comes at like mode one. Sometimes turning that off helps a lot. I just can't remember what it's called. Is it like a bass boost? It's something. Yeah. Good times. Good times for sure. Uh, tech tip of the day. Um, the yeah, one? Be young and agile when working on a car. Look at that position. Look at him just getting in there, getting that zero gauge. Yeah, you can do it, man. You can do it. Are the Focal entry level amps any good? Yes. Uh, there again, the auditor is about as entry level as Focal gets. Mm -hmm. uh, if you'd like to see that amplifier perform, we did. Uh, last quarter, we had that and we installed it in Haley's car for the lab. Class AB. Uh, it is Class AB. It's pretty affordable. Um, which brings us to the next thing. Uh, hey guys, have you entered yet? Have you gone over to Focal America on Instagram, this here platform, and followed them and then sent us a screenshot to D and F Christmas at yahoo.com? Have you done that yet? That's the only way you're going to win this. This is the auditor subwoofer that we did in that video. Um, sound retriever. Sound retriever. That's Thank what, you. That's what Jeff said. Yes, it's called sound retriever. Shut that off uh, in the Pioneer decks. Uh, anyways, this could be yours. We're going to be giving this away Saturday. And how you win this is you go to Focal America. All one word. Remember, it's Instagram. Follow the page. Take a screenshot that shows the follow. And email us a picture to D and F Christmas at yahoo.com. We are going to be drawing the winner this Saturday on the live show that we do on YouTube every Saturday that we can. Um, so that's coming up. We're going to be giving this guy away. So pretty excited about that. Uh, uh, what fast rings did you guys use? And are they closed cell or open cell phone? Well, Fast Rings is a brand, so think of Fast Rings as like Kleenex. Kleenex is a brand. It's, they're actually, the, the, that is called facial tissue, but Kleenex and Puffs are brands. Fast Ring is a brand. It is not a thing. It has become the thing, but is actually a brand. So we use the Fast Rings that are licensed by Stinger. It is an open cell foam. Okay, it is open cell. Uh, and it does take a lot of water in order for it to suck it up like a sponge, but it is, uh, which we've, we've played with many times in the bathroom, just cause why not? Um, this one, eh, whatever, you know, it's where the water is. This one is actually a six by nine because the elate, uh, we made an oversized bracket to fit it. We added in this piece here so we could countersink it in and look, make it look real sexy. Um, so it's a three piece. You have this piece here, the one in the middle and the one that goes on the back of the door. But yes, it is, it is very much open cell. Uh, if you're not into the open cell stuff, uh, Metra makes a silicone-based one. 
that you can check out. You can find that at metroonline.com. Um, so yeah, there's there's that. How you doing, man? Doing okay? Uh, yeah, wonderful. Uh, no, Bobby, not yet. Haley still needs to sign it. Yes, I will be taking it home Friday for Haley to sign. So don't worry, Haley, Haley's going to be on there. Uh, Dean, I sent you an article. Yes, I read that. Um, we, we, uh, yes. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, what was your favorite system you had in your younger years? Ooh. Years, I had a Mitsubishi Eclipse. That was like, what, 50 years ago? No, it was yeah. not. <laughs> shit, shut up. Um, back in 1993, I had a white Mitsubishi Eclipse. Amongst many systems that I put in it, one was an Orion GT system. Back then, they made a 620 and a 420 GT. Uh, I think we reviewed a 620 GT not too long ago. I still own one of them. Uh, anyways, turned the amplifiers upside down, so I had basically... Six, four, ten, cha- yeah, ten channels of audio. Uh, Morel mids and highs. So Morel tweeters in the dash. Morel mid range, mid bass in the door, uh, and then two Orion XTR eights and a plexiglass bandpass. The amplifiers are mounted upside down, plexi, all trimmed out in vinyl. Um, looks really cool. Sat in the trunk. It was only like eight inches tall, so we still had some trunk space. Put a piece of carpet over. It was a full hidden system. Um, that one I had a lot of fun with, and, and, and oddly enough, built it out of birch before birch was a thing. Um, just built it out of birch because birch was lighter. Uh, it had nothing to do with whether we were going to use MDF or not. It was just it was lighter wood, and I needed it to be light because I needed to be able to lift it up so I could get to the spare tire underneath it. So you could just lift the box out and get to the spare tire. It was kind of cool. Uh, I had neon in it and all that fun stuff. I really enjoyed that system. I think that was... That one was fun. I've had others, but that one's just one that pops in my mind. Uh, what you? What? What's up, dudes? Love you guys. Work, learn a lot from you guys. That I actually found a job as a car stereo installer at a shop. Thank you for your videos. They helped me a lot, dude. That is pretty cool. Thank you for sharing that. That's Why did that. You go to Knowledge Fest. Yes, head to Knowledge Fest for sure. Uh, having trouble with the audio, can't hear you guys. Uh, your phone. I don't know. Hopefully we're okay. LOL, Fernando. Audio is fine here. Okay. 620 GT. So there was a problem with the 620 GT, though, that like immediately I found out, and that was that back then all amplifiers, like they only had four-channel inputs, um, and the gain for the six-channel, even though it had its own gain, it was it was regulated by gain on three and four so you'd have to crank up three and four to get anything out of the six channel so or five and six so it was kind of stupid um yeah and and it was yeah it was just weird had very entry level crossovers and stuff but hey back in the day it was some pretty high-end shit uh that's right dean happy birthday or had a birthday coming up in a few days i do have a birthday coming up in a few days uh are you selling the warhorse okay so no i'm not selling the warhorse uh it was a thank you gift from Kicker. It's signed over here by Steve Irby. It was a thank you gift that they sent us for doing the uh, documentary years ago when we filmed that. Um, I had made the comment, what, does everybody have one of these? Because literally there's a part of a warhorse on almost everybody's desk, it seems like. Um, and, and Joe and the guys, uh, Aziz, uh, hunted one down and had steve sign it and they sent it to me as a thank you gift it was one of the coolest things ever it is neutered so it is not going to ever play again Uh, a lot of these things that they had were for parts and whatnot um so this is a neutered war horse which i don't care because it just looks freaking cool on the wall right um but no that's that's that so yeah can't sell it has too much meaning god no i don't want to be 29 again miss the orion comics i know i have them all at home I had him here for a long time. Sounds good here. Uh, D6 1200 of power for late carbons. Yeah, I mean, it's like 120 watts by six. Um, any idea why I lost my mid base on the doors? It was good before gain setting using Morel over two 603s. After gain setting, no mid base. I don't know. That's a weird one. I mean, unless you're having some form of a volume phase issue. Maybe, or you were getting way more mid-bass from your subwoofer 
which gave you, I don't know, that would be weird. Now you're getting some phasing cancellation between the sub and the mid-range. Maybe start over by turning it back down and then working your way forward and seeing where that gets you. If something worked and then it stopped working, go back to when it worked and move forward from there. Uh, Saturday. Zen 9 anytime soon? You got 2,000 bucks, it's yours. You want the Zen 9, 2,000 bucks, you can have it. I'm not attached. Oh, nice, congratulations. Uh, Haley's is the 13th. Um, thoughts on new JK Audio Tune Tools? Uh, I haven't seen those. Yeah, I honestly haven't seen those, send me a link. Um, I, I didn't even know that was a thing. JK Audio Tune Tools? Have you heard of that? What? JK Audio Tune Tools. JK or JL maybe? No, JK. I mean, if you're talking about JL, the... the it's a JL Audio. If you're talking about the new tools. JL Audio Max, yeah. yeah, that's cool. We got one. I, I just haven't had any time to do anything with it. But yes, it's freaking awesome. And yes, I've already got one. Yeah, see, JL Audio. Uh, okay, so J- yeah, sorry. No, the, the yeah. Tune Max is freaking awesome, man. Oh, yeah, yeah as soon as it was available... <laughs> Yeah, as soon as it was available, we bought one. So, yes, we have one. It, right now, it's at my house. Because um, that seems to be the only place I might have time to open it up and start playing with it. Um, uh, what's in the bay? F350 that we put a Morel Elite Carbon system with some audio control amplifiers. Uh, I'm 52 on the 25th. All right, Bobby. Um, all right, wait a minute. Yeah, no, we are old. Sorry, man. Ah. Hey, man, we suck. All right, it's just, you win, Fernando. Yes. You win. Twenty. Uh, 2019 Nissan Kicks factory Bose system. Looking to add a subwoofer. Do you know of a harness uh, I can use for an LLC? No, you're not going to have one for that. But the subwoofer, you should just go to the subwoofer. You'll be fine. Um, and, and there again, you just tee into it you'll you'll be all right um but no there really isn't a harness for that it's something like that no uh mr mustang ball breaker here uh gents have you done an install where you put a coax speaker in lieu of the oem oem bass driver on a newer mustang wondering uh no no not not a chance always just do a three-way set you can, Morel has a bunch of them that are reasonably priced, so does Focal. Uh, where can I find the Match 5.4 DSP amp? Only place I can find them is on eBay. Uh, that's because you have to be an authorized dealer to own, to sell it. There is no online retailers for that. Uh, if you're interested in picking one up, you can give Paul a call, uh, and he can help you out with that, 727-216-6170. Um, so, yeah. Best sounding system you installed in the newer F two fifties? I don't know. I don't really. F two fifties? Yeah. I mean, it's an F one fifty. F two fifty. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, honestly, I have no. I don't. Yeah. I mean, they all sound good. Uh, what do you think about the Morel six by nine component set for a Nissan Frontier? I'm using a audio control D four point eight hundred DSP. Should I go active? Or use the passive crossovers. Um, we've done both in that with those. Most of the time, we just do passive. Uh, I love them; they sound great. Uh, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't fit in the door. Verse polarity side jag tonight. Yes, they are. Um, so, for those of you that don't have anything to do tonight, tune into the Hi Fi Vega Network first for reverse polarity. Uh, well, it's one of the most serious car audio talk shows in the industry. I don't know of anything else that is really hitting the hard topics of car audio. That is at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. You definitely don't want to miss that. And then follow that up on SciJag. That's its own network, SciJag, where we talk about movies and more. We'll be talking tonight about Top Gun Maverick. So pretty excited to do that. So stay tuned. I'm uh, going to be installing a sub setup in my buddy's 2019 F-150 Lariat, but it has non-premium sound. What wire should I tap into for the LC1i? Driver's front. 
Driver's front. You can get it in the kick. It is... Which one is that? White? White. Which one? What the car? driver's front, F-150. Uh, white, white, brown. Is that white, white? White, is, yeah, white, white, white brown. So there's a white wire and a white with a brown stripe. They're going to be thin. They're like 18 gauge. Mm -hmm. um, White's positive. White is positive. Thank you, Fernando. So, yeah, tap in there. You'll be fine. I'm 50 free. I'm 50 free and still love bass and my vehicles and home theater. Hey, man. I Trust me. It, 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 I'm with you. Uh, can I buy a Morel Hybrid Woofer Solo? Want to want a better woofer than the Tempo Ultra? Where can I buy just the woofer? Um, there again, you could give Paul a call and, you know, he could reach out and see if that's something that they sell by themselves. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, a lot of the times you can buy the individual drivers. So, uh, yeah, just give Paul a call and if he can hook you up with that, he'll take care of it. Uh... That show is so serious. It is very serious. Uh, how many 1993 to 1995 Civics did you get to work on back in the day? That's really was a pop. Oh, dude. Yeah. I mean, the 93 to 95 Honda Civic. Um, I, you know what? I think Sue actually had a bubble back black one back then. That might have been nine. Yeah, it was about a 95. It was the bubble back. She had one of those. It was like her first new car. She loved it. Uh, and then she bought CRVs after that. Thinking about getting back into installing. Haven't done it since 2005. It's a lot harder now. It's a lot harder. Um, just go back and watch some of our videos. You know, I mean, why not? They're hiring. Lots of places are hiring. That is for sure. Um, all right, guys, listen, I'd love to stay in chat, but I got to get back to work. Fernando's almost out of my way. So you guys have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget, news at 9 o'clock. News at 9 o'clock. And make sure you get your entry in D, -A -D and F Christmas at Yahoo.com. Screenshot Focal America. And we'd like to thank Morel. You can find them at MorelHiFi.com for sponsoring the Instagram show. You guys have a wonderful day. We'll see you. Bye. Are we live? Huh? Are we live? Not yet. Oh. It takes a while? It takes a while. Live just doesn't happen. It's got to be earned. It does. It does have to be earned. <laughs> it has to be earned. Especially on YouTube. This ain't YouTube. I know. This is the Graham. The Graham Crackers. Lazy. He's on his phone, as always. Look, he looks... Look at that... Look, look at his beard. He looks like an Amish dude. Why is he growing a beard? I don't know. He's trying to be Amish. He's always wanted one. What's up, Danny? It's weird. It's okay. Hey, Haley's calling Fernando weird. Yeah. What's he doing? Haley's on the gram. Hi. You gonna edit the video? I need the video to well, edit. Okay, that's my plan tomorrow. I can get it to you. <laughs> Amish kingpin. <laughs> I don't think you've ever. I don't think he's ever Mexican Amish. <laughs> There's no way he doesn't hear us. No, he doesn't. He, we we make sure the the sound is muted. He's just like, what? What are they talking about? Hey, from El Paso. Hi guys, what's happening? Is he on? Uh, he might be. No, he's not. Yeah, he's on. He's oh, laughing. Yeah, he's See, now he's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. Oh, no doubt, right? He's like a little Mexican Abraham Lincoln. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're talking about your beard. Oh, hey, open that door for me, Haley. Yeah, let's leave it open. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, always leave the door open. Especially if the windows are up. And the, keys uh, and the keys in it. Grab the key from me out of the cup holder. That would probably be better. He won't go. Uh, it, it, it probably won't, but it might. That's just. We don't want to find out. We don't. Yeah, exactly. You we. Know how to do it? Like get it out. Unlock the car. How? There's people for that. Oh. I feel like you would know. Kingpin just milked the cow. We don't have a cow. Oh, yeah, I remember that scene. Yeah, no, I don't think Haley's ever seen I don't think Sue's ever seen That's Kingpin. Crazy. Woody Harrelson, um, Bill Murray. No, he's never seen I'm probably the only one that's ever seen it. It's okay. It's utterly It's utterly stupid. 50. Where's your, did you, yeah, your envelope? Whatever. Yeah, don't lose that. Okay. So how are you doing, Fernando? Oh, wonderful, man. Yeah? Yeah.
How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Does it, you feel any different? No. Why would I feel any different? I mean, it's 50, man. Dude, you got a lot of replying to do. I know. I reply to all of them. Really? Yeah. At 11 o'clock, you had 167. I'll reply to every single every, one. Oh, my gosh. I always do. Imagine. Someone took the time to do it, I will reply. I'm not one of those. Put it in funny. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Birthday salad. Birthday <laughs> salad? Nah, not tonight. It's birthday. What are we eating? Ooh, uh, I'm trying to decide between the, the Palm Harbor Pizza Place or Noble Crust. I thought you figured it out. No, I didn't. Great. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Danny. Thank you so much. Uh, so, bad thing happened, guys. We, we got a charger in, and we desperately wanted to film it. However, we didn't get started on it until late, late, late yesterday, and so we weren't able to film it because it, it, we were trying to we were trying to hit a time frame, and it just yeah. didn't work out, and so we didn't film it. I feel bad because I really wanted to film it. Um, I will tell you this. I'll tell you a couple things about it. Um, could you open the passenger door and fold the seat forward for me? So most of the time what happens in these cars is it, this got first off it got a dsr1 this had the alpine system in it just slide it forward um and you know the batteries back here in the trunk we did a p3 i think he had this he had a p312 i don't remember what happened there uh grill two amps two big amps um well oh, thank you uh happy birthday dean 50 is a new 35 it's like port wine gets no, better with the age exactly. 50 is still 50, yeah. 50, 50 on 50. Anyways, you got a light over there? I got a light over there. Okay, so we we had two R2 amplifiers to put in here, and we've never done this before in this car. Yes, we put amplifiers underneath the seats all the time in every vehicle we ever work on, but because the batteries in the trunk, we've always just found, you know, put them in the trunk, and, and he really wanted some space back there. He didn't want to take up any room. I don't know why, this is one of those times where we never thought about it. So this is an R750.1, and then underneath the driver's seat is the R500.4. Both of the amplifiers are exact same size. Both of the spaces underneath the seat are the exact same. Uh, so we were able to make a bracket that comes off of both of these brackets here, folds down and goes up underneath. And both of those amplifiers tucked up in there like, like they were made to be there. The floor mat still goes in. Um, everything still works. It's, uh, it's great. The seat slides back and forth, up and down, obviously. Um, but yeah, we were able to tuck both those amps inside. Now, one of the cool things about doing the DSR-1 in this car, which I absolutely love, is because, like, there's no good place to put a base knob. Like, there's no good place. Like, you could, like, put one here, but it just kind of sticks out. It looks weird. It's okay, though. I mean, we've done it. It's fine. Um... But in here, it's like there's there's no good. You have no depth. So, all right, let me shut my door because it's going to do that chimey, chimey crap that I absolutely hate. So, yeah, it's on ox, so it's okay. not going to... Because remember... Uh, so, one of the cool things with the DSR-1 is you come into it, and in the option for the DSR-1, we could program base here... We are subwoofer for level control. So as you can see, the base is turned all the way up. Treble still does treble, mid still does mid, but this is subwoofer for level. So it's gonna control the subwoofer for level. Then we go to speed adjust. This is punch EQ. So this is punch EQ at zero. This is nine, this is 15, and this is 18. So it basically goes 12 o'clock, uh, three o'clock, and then all the way around to all the way up, back, back around to, yeah, south. Um, so really cool feature that you can do with the DSR-1 and the Dodge. Some of the other cars will do it as well, uh, but I like it because now I don't have to put a base knob anywhere. So, um, that makes it really nice. Mm -hmm. it's, it's super cool and it's easy outputs, enough to get to. How many outputs the DSR-1 has? DSR-1 has eight outputs, mm -hmm. uh, assignable. The really neat thing about a DSR-1, okay, two things two things that are really neat. One, if you want to know anything there is to know about DSR-1, we have three videos that talk all about DSR-1 um, and goes really, I think they're in the Rockford playlist. Uh, so I mean, you can learn anything you need to know about DSR-1. Two, uh, the DSR-1 
is all controlled from a smartphone or, or a tablet, Android or Apple. This one I do have to play the Apple fanboy card because the software works way better on the Apple than it does on the Android. It's different. It's different and it's just so much easier to use on the Apple. Uh, we use an iPad. We use an old, old iPad. It doesn't have to be anything new, snazzy, or cool. You know how I it's, do one? No. Come on, man. No, Haley does. I don't. Um, She's cool. You have a new iPad. I do. Yes. Um, all right, let's, let's turn it off. Anyways, uh, so when a sign, so you have to flash it, of course, if you're going to do AR like we are doing in this car, because uh, this has the Alpine system in it. So the factory amplifier in this car is located right, right here. And we take that out and we make our mount for the DSR-1. So this is, this is the factory multi-channel amplifier. We pull this out and then the DSR-1 plugs right into that harness using the ADCH2, ACH2, something like that. Uh, what are your thoughts on JL Shallows? What are your thoughts on the JL Shallows? It's, it's a pretty incredible woofer. There's yeah. no doubt about it. JL can make a shallow woofer. JL can make a woofer, period. Yeah. Um, the shallows are definitely nice. Um, never never had a complaint there. Uh, just changed the radio on an SC430. Radio has a loud hiss when volume is at zero. Use access module and JVC radio. Is that normal? Woo! SC430. Okay, anytime you're doing SC430, there's only one company that makes an interface for that that works, and that is... Beatsonic. Beatsonic. That's right, Beatsonic. Uh, it's worth the investment. It's worth the wait. Get the Beat Sonic piece. Other things too that you need to know: if you didn't follow the instructions for programming the radio, meaning before you take the factory radio out, you have to put your bass to zero, your treble to zero, and then turn the volume on the radio all the way up. I turn the course. car off. Pull the radio out because you're integrating into that Mark Levinson amplifier. And it's a memory that's from the radio into the amp. So let's say if the treble was turned all the way up and you pulled the radio out and didn't reset it, then yeah, you'll get a lot of hiss. Um, but no, hiss isn't typically normal. We don't have any problems with that. So, but there again, just just my thought. Bobby, thank you, Bobby. Ah, oh, that charger. Hey, I hate my stock Alpine, worst sound ever. All right, so what we did for sound in this car, um, he tried to he tried to he tried to do it first himself, um, and he got creative. He mounted some uh, infinities up in the rear deck. I uh, perfectly cut the holes, which was kind of neat. So we kept those. There's no reason that they're they're fine. They do their thing. And then he put the same infinities in this door. And then he put some infinities up in here. And he, were they JBLs in the rear? Which ones were JBLs? Uh, it's, it's all JBL. It was all JBL. I thought it was Infinity. My bad. All JBL. All right. So, anyways, regardless of that, had a coaxial here. Power. Had, those are coaxials back there, and of course, nothing sounded good. Three and a half up in the dash. Or, the Alpine system. That's a subwoofer. Those are subwoofers, and these are the only two speakers in the car that generate any type of sound. It sounded terrible. So. Figured out the best course of action for this. I was gonna try to, I was trying to keep his JBLs, but he was like, you know what, just just take them out. So we went with a set of Kenwood 6903s. So we have the 16, the three and a half Kenwood up here. We have a six by six by nine mid bass here. Now the rear speakers are playing full range. Um, and of course with the DSR1, tune the whole system up with the DMRTA and back in business, which my computer is probably hating. So let me, I can hear the fan. Let me wake this thing up and shut that off. Quit DMRTA. Thank you. Got to shut it off. It keeps your fan going on your computer. Um, okay, so that's what we did for speakers in there. Uh, an amp with ground on his level. Does it need to wait? An amp with a ground on his level. Does it need to be on? high level? Oh, Jesus. I An amp with a ground on high level, does it need to be used? I, don't, I, don't, I still don't understand the question. 
I mean, you have right. to put the ground regardless yeah. on an amplifier. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if he's talking about like those those high level plugs that like have five wires where you have two signals and then you have that fifth ground up the middle, you know, on like the Planet Audio style. In that case, I've never used that ground. Um, but it, you, I mean, the amplifier ground you always have to use, yeah. and then the signal ground, yes, you'd have to use positive and negative speaker because it's a balanced input at that point. So you got to have both. Uh, is Haley there to bring your birthday card? Haley's here dropping a cake. Oh my god. I can't, re- I, dude, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. Turns 50 and everything goes <laughs> No, she's not bringing Bye. me my cake. She stopped by to actually, she was doing something That's early great. and she brought back, she was with my mom, so she brought my mom's card. The cake is at home. The cake is at home. You should post Woo-hoo. a picture of it on uh, the Boring oh, Life. I should. I have pictures. All right, we'll post a picture on Boring Life. You want mom to bring it for life? No, 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 no. I want it cold. Yeah, so I want to share it with you. Uh, kicker key amp or key lock to get flat signal in a Chevy Traverse L. That's funny. Okay. Say that. Where'd it go? <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, okay. Show, it. Show them the cake. Oh, wow. Look oh, at that there's one. There's the cake. That's a big donut. Yeah. It is a big donut. <laughs> it's a bug cake. Who doesn't like bug cakes? All right. So here's a, here's a sneak peek of... This is... So for anybody that's going to Knowledge Fest, this is our training rig. We're teaching the kicker class today, or what, Saturday, Saturday at 3. Saturday. We'll be teaching the kicker class in English at 3 on Saturday and Sunday in Spanish. Uh, 4.30. Is it 4.30? 4? I don't know. Sometime like Sunday. that. And so this is, the, what we have going on here is we're going to be able to, with the IRTA2, we're going to be able to look at and display up on the big monitor uh, the because the iPad will plug into this and then the iPad will screen share up to the Apple TV that we're going to play onto the monitor. Anyways, this is going to show us the input from the kicker key and the output from the kicker key. Now, there's two different things. This so we have a key lock, a 400, the 200.4, and the 500.1 microphone. All right, what a key lock does and what a to kicker key. kicker key amplifier does are two totally different things and this is really what separates the two key technologies out of these products the 501 has the same technology as the lock to do what it does but this doesn't have this and all right so fernando yes what type of technology does this have that is key this is electrical rta and what does this use acoustical rta now for those of you at home what does that mean that means that when you hook this up to your factory radio, it is going to look at the sound coming from your factory radio. Everything that's happening, all the EQ, all the delay, all the all pass, all the nonsense that's coming into it, and it is going to come into this. First thing it's gonna do is use its RTA to tell you, does it have enough signal to do what you're trying to do? So it has three lights, low, mid, and high. If all three, all three of them light up, that means you have a great signal to go out to a full range system. If the other, you know, whichever ones light up are gonna tell you what you can and can't do. Once it runs its software, it's going to come out flat, <whistles> really flat. That then can go into any amplifier, any DSP, or in this case can go into a 200.4 and feed it a perfectly flat signal. Now what this is doing when you hook it up to your aftermarket radio, it is using this microphone to play its test tone and re-EQ the system. It is not gonna fix any time factory time delay, any all pass filters that might affect the imaging of the car. It's not gonna do any of that. So, this came out first it's really cool awesome tech and if the car doesn't have any nonsense like the ford we put it in or mm-hmm. like a lot of the cars on the road that just have base model audio base however toyota and nissan they're not base honda base but tons of roll off so this won't for highs in a honda this is great and this is great to fix the subwoofer or this is great to fix the subwoofer because in a honda you have a high pass filter at 80 hertz so at like 80 or 100 hertz, it just rolls right off. So if you put this in there, this will fix it, or if you just go with the key 501 for your sub. But if, let's say you don't want a 500 watt amp. Let's say you want a 1,000 watt amp. Put a key in front of it. I mean, reality is, is you're gonna put this on the front channels of a Honda and fix everything. You're just gonna feed it into this and whatever sub amp you have. 
uh, perfectly fine. Um, but this will fix the acoustical problem. This, I'm sorry, this will fix the electrical problems that you have. This will fix the acoustical problems that you have. It'll automatically, so these kind of go hand in hand. Um, and there, of course, you know, if you want something bigger than 500 watts, you can go with this. Add any big ass sub amp to this. Boom, Bob's your uncle, everyone's happy. Donut Lord, do you remember his name? Donut Lord? No. I sound Sonic. Oh, right, yes. Anyway, so that's what's going on. A good four channel line output. Um, so there again, it's not a standard line output converter. A line output converter takes in what's coming in, reduces the voltage, and then feeds it out. LC7i, LC2i are great high-end line output converters, but they're not going to DEQ the system. This has a full DSP built into it, designed to take all that nonsense out of the equation and make it as flat as humanly possible, which in some cases is very important. It's also designed to remove all pass filters. I'm sorry, it's not technically remove them, however, work their way around them by mirroring the all pass filter on the other side, which in turn will negate them. Right. Better words to be used. Negate, negate. yes. Big word. Yeah, big word of the day. Um, what do you think of, what do you, what do you think general subwoofer performance on Japanese cars? I have a Japanese car. What does it say? I mean, it's a sub. Um, uh, most, most, Honda's really the one that's doing the, the nonsense right now with the high pass filter. Everyone else is just kind of normal. Um, and there again, even with, it, it just depends on how much power you're having. You know, I feel the problem is with, even with base, you know, 80 hertz high pass filter, if you put 3,000 watts in there, you know, you might have a thousand watt amp at this point just because of the volume <laughs> that it's playing at. So you might be good. Uh, I installed the pack harness on my charger and installed a three-way component set like heaven. Perfect. Amp pros are, the, are, are very nice. Uh, where do you guys get the wave foam used indoors? That is part of the Ground Zero kit. So the whole Ground Zero kit comes with that. Uh, it comes with the... We call it egg crate foam. Mm -hmm. um, you might be able to find that just typing in egg crate foam um, because you can buy it. It's just usually doesn't have sticky stuff on the other side, but sometimes it does. And this is a smaller egg crate mm -hmm. than, you know, but acoustical panels and stuff like that you can buy uh, with that type of stuff. But it all comes in the Ground Zero kit. comes with that foam, metal, sound tree. It's a whole nine yards. Foam. More foam. Uh, is your birthday? Okay. It's your birthday. If so, happy birthday. It is my birthday, and thank you so much. What size socks do you use? Medium? Medium. Yeah. Socks? Yeah. I don't know, whatever. I it might be the same. I don't know. Socks stretch. I just go to the 42 millimeters. Everything, every, 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 everything in the... Um, Everything in the Vibram thing is, is done in I, European. You have 42 millimeters there? Yes. <laughs> what? Yep, that's what I do. Yeah, but they'll do, they do in the running stores. They know, they know gotta, that stuff. You gotta buy in Home Depot, man. Uh, good tweeters you recommend. Depends what you're trying to do. There's two types of tweeters in this world, and everything is built off of those. Hard dome, soft dome. Hard dome is going to be more hard. It's, uh, I'm not going to use the word harsh because that's not fair. Um, it's just going to... I like to think of... When a tweeter tries to recreate break, broken glass, that THX type sound, you know, where um, a hard dome is going to be more crisp, whereas a soft dome might sound a little bit more smooth or subdued, not really subdued. They're both equally loud, so you just have to figure out which one you like. Uh, some people like the, the, the hard dome because it just gives you that like, ah, but it, even a soft dome will do that. It's just... But those are the two types of tweeters. You have to decide what you like and go from there. Um, it's for a Soren Vega performance amp. Never did one. Okay. Happy birthday. Thank you. Um, Sue said you dropped a Boring Life episode soon. Yeah, so we filmed one last weekend. Haley has to edit it. So we're going we're gonna to work on that this weekend, getting her the editing suite, kind of walking her through the process so that she can kind of hopefully take that over. Um, birthday ice cream cake is the best. No. We Chocolate had a, cake 
I yeah, I'm not an ice cream cake guy. I just yeah, I mean it's yummy, but nah. Stra- strawberry, strawberry cake or cherry chip. Yeah. Happy birthday! Thank you. Nice cake. Yeah, she. I posted it. Cherry chip. Oh, she posted it. Happy birthday! Thank you. Mmm, ice cream cake. Uh, all right, let's let's get past all this. Uh, what's a good single din that won't break the bank? Single din? Really? Wow. Um, I know Hi-Fi just reviewed the one he got. He got a Kenwood Exelon, like yeah, three hundred four or something like that. Reasonably priced. Um, check out any Kenwood Exelon. Um, yeah, they make a three five and a seven, I believe, and pretty much all the features are in the three. Just depends on like what you're trying to do. Um, also, are you guys fans of the HD JL and C5? I, I'm a more of a I'm this, more of a VXI kind of guy. Yeah. 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 The HD. I mean, I the HD are good, but yeah. I, I mean, VXI. it's a. I, I mean, I don't go. Oh my god, no. Uh, given the pandemic, do you guys? Still see a lot of ABC radios coming your way. Um, I mean, we've been pretty pretty lucky. I mean, Paul buys a lot of everything, and we sell like we sell Alpine, Kenwood, Kenwood Exelon, JVC, Pioneer, Sony. Did I say Alpine? Yep. Um, I and pa- uh, do, who who don't we sell? No, so I mean, we we've been able, to, you know, when one is out, the other one might have them. So we we he buys a ton of radios. So really, the only oddball radio we got was the Grundig radio that Amp Global was selling, and even that was a pretty nice radio. Um, <laughs> we won't get into that. Uh, how do I get post of the week on Clean Wire Club Facebook? All right, good question. Every Monday, you know, we we put that up. Uh, pay Fernando's is a good way to do it. Fernando picks it. Yeah. Um, so, usually what happens is what, Sunday? Uh, Sunday, I go through the whole week. Oh, yeah. And, and look at pictures. Picking all the pictures that they are really nice, you know. Take a picture. Take your time. Don't take just a random picture that is not going to look good, blurry, or something like that. So... He's a photo snob now because he's hung out with me for the last five years, um, and he's learned a lot. Like if you follow, what is your Instagram? Lopez underscore thirteen. Um, he does really good work because I've yelled at him and beat him with sticks. So it's like that's a crappy picture. Rule of thirds, leading lines. Come on, what are you doing? Get a light for God's sake. So he's become quite the photo snob. So yeah, don't take a snapshot. Take a good shot. Do good work. Um, make sure it's clean. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, make a couple sh- zip ties is not going to make it clean. But well, it depends if they're strategically placed. 100%. Zip ties. It might do. It. But, you know, just. You know, if they're the right zip ties, you don't need 5,000 zip no, ties. No, you don't. You could do it with three. With three is fine. I would accept yeah. that challenge. Yeah. I, I bet you oh, I could. Oh, look do at this it. one. It has three right there. Oh, shush. <laughs> <laughs> it's also three inches. Uh, my husband, my amp does does that. My amps don't seem to be making the power they could. Not improving my ground from the battery be the issue. So there's a lot of there's a lot of things that go into what makes an amplifier make power. Um, when we dyno amplifiers, you know. All right, so let's take this from the beginning. So let's let's talk about an amp dyno for a minute because the reason why we have the amp dyno. These are three Astron power supplies. Each one of these is 70 amps of current. This is 50 amps of current. They all put it out at 14.4. Um, and then these are giant 2150 Stinger batteries back here. And these are the backup. So we have this giant. And then if we need to, <laughs> we can take that guy there and get a 300 amp push at just the right second to try to keep this at 14.4. It's a big pain in the butt. Now, depending on the amplifiers you bought, the efficiency is going to vary. So last week, we were doing some amp dynos for Amp Global. Uh, Our boy Jeff brought a bunch of amplifiers by, and we had two 1500-watt amplifiers that were strikingly different 
and how efficient they were. One of them took lightning to get it to, to, to stay at 14 volts because it was just a super inefficient amplifier and it was just bogging the system down. Whereas the other one was a 1500 watt amp and it was doing just fine. So there's a lot of things that go into whether or not you're going to be getting that power to the amplifier. Now put that into a car. If you have an extremely inefficient amplifier, the electrical system in your car is just not going to be able to keep up with that. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it, okay. If you have a good ground plane, it's not going to matter what you have. You just don't have the current to do it, okay? So, oh I know, God. we're getting there. We're getting no. there. <laughs> what? Jeff is like, Fernando, blink twice if you need help. <laughs> Anyways, so basically what I'm getting at is, yes, make sure you have a good ground plane, digital multimeter, see what kind of voltage you're getting at the battery, see what kind of voltage you're getting at the amplifiers, and that will help you understand what's going on with your car. If you have severe voltage drop at your amplifiers, yes, increase your ground plane, increase your power plane, make sure that everything is, is where it's supposed to be. But if you meter at your battery and you got 13.6 at your battery, okay, or 13.5 or 12.8 or whatever's going on at your battery, man, you just might not have a big enough alternator to do it. And so those amplifiers are reacting to the system they're in. You know, if you have an 80 amp alternator and you have 250 amps of current draw and you have, let's say, a two or three year old battery and no way to charge up that battery and keep the current in it up to date, it doesn't matter what your ground plane looks like. You're never going to have enough power to, chart to turn those amplifiers on. So that's why, you know, like the cart start efficiency more expensive amplifiers that do a better job stuff like that is, is kind of the conversation a lot of people are having <sighs> tomorrow there is a base competition here in houston hmm? i'm going to give a trophy for the best and the worst wiring <laughs> all right so they, they were yeah, wiring get cool. a trophy too yeah why not oh. hey man hey I, I would make a trophy that says you suck <laughs> <laughs> And you can complain at Fernando yeah. Lopez at. <laughs> Please, at this moment, all the yeah. center, yeah. our assistant, and other clients. Uh, you got Haley doing editing. Oh, I haven't got her to do it yet. I haven't got her to do it yet. So the goal is to give it a try and see what happens. Good luck. Uh, ever play with massive audio equipment? Got DSP one. Not sure how to tune it yet. Uh, unfortunately, no. I have not looked at the, the massive DSP? DSPs. I would be, I'd be curious. I mean, just download it and play with it. Well, you know, I, yeah. My old computer broke that had all my DSP software on it, so I'm slowly but surely adding it to the substitute. That's right. You have that DSP, right? I thought I Download it. I did on the I other so. computer, but I never really, I don't remember what it looked like. I think it's the same Chinese DSP software that everybody uses, mm. which if it is, that's great because that's awesome software, yeah. um, and it's fairly download it, it's fairly good to use. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I have time. How would you describe the difference between hybrid 602s and audio frog GBs? Ooh. What would you recommend? GBs, huh? Man, if we're talking like a GB60, yeah, dude, well, man, that's that's I mean, like that's, that's it, not fair. Because the other one is that's like GS. Yeah, that's like a Mike Tyson of mid bass, man. God, I mean, tons of mid bass with that one, man. Man, I, dude, that's where my fanboy is going to be questioning. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, maybe the Elates go up to the elate i don't know what the price difference is between like a gb60 and elate and a hybrid mm -hmm. um they're both great speakers i mean you're talking gold heavyweight contention going on right here um i think it just you really got to pay attention to what it's going in how much power you have that kind of thing is really going to be what's going to matter the most on that um they're both phenomenal mid bass so I, I think just kind of look at where you're putting it. Make sure you have the room for the GB, because um, the, the, All right, the hybrid so I think is a little he smaller. Mentioned, he mentioned something about putting in the um, Accord, the Honda Accord. So you're going to be cutting the door no matter what. Door, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you definitely be cutting the door on that if you're trying to put either one of those um, in that, yeah. for sure. But it's worth it. They're both awesome. Mm -hmm. Paul buys a lot, so if he doesn't have it, it's out of stock, period. <laughs> Yeah, you're right, Christian. We're a problem if we don't have it. Uh, your advice on a great SQ four channel amp. Cool. So many. Yeah, I mean, uh, all right. 
I'm a bigger fan of like amplifiers with DSPs, unless you've already got a DSP. Uh, I like to keep the amplifier DSP, as I like to call the TV VCR combo together, just because for one, it's easier to install, it takes up less room, um, it's cheaper in the long run, uh, okay, more affordable. But there are a lot of good amplifier DSPs out there. Um, most modern high-end amplifiers are going to cost you money you get what you pay for uh so look around um don't don't there's nothing there's nothing in car audio where you just magically get a great deal on something you're paying for it no matter what and if you don't think you are then or you're going to get away with it you're not going to um but i mean it's plenty you know i mean if you're looking for the best bang in town Okay, like best bang in town four channel amplifier. Check out the Morel M M. What is it? MPS. Sorry. Yeah, uh, MPS four hundred point four. That's one MPS four hundred point four. Uh, it's seventy watts by four, class A B. Mm-hmm. Uh, sexy as hell. But the new one, the new. They only make them the two channel and the mono block. Uh, so that doesn't the forty fifth anniversary doesn't count. But that's and they make the five channel also, which is really cool because the five channel is a split power so you get a b for one through four and then class d for the sub amp so it's really kind of cool um and they're extremely affordable so yeah it's mr oh mr lopez 13 mr lopez that's hey. your uh that's right <laughs> that's jeff's funny man <laughs> jeff's Blink silly twice uh helix m4 dsp and the four dot 800 thank you jeff that's correct we have both of those amplifiers. We just haven't migrated. We're doing a really bad job at migrating those in. So, but those are two great amplifiers for sure. Um, Got to screw them to the wall. I'm running Morale, all Morale right now. No DSP. Love them. You bet, Christian. You bet. Uh, should I try the Alpine MX setting on and turn my AC810? To see what it sounds like. Been told it isn't bad. By who? Dude. No. Do not. Okay. I mean, hey. It? Alpine MX. It's the it's the the MX button, the like blown speaker button. Listen, you can do whatever you want. Try it. You know, practice safe. You know, don't play it at loud volumes. Have whatever. It's dude. It's your system to play with. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you not to do something. However. The MX button is, it's a speaker killer. There's it's dangerous. It can be dangerous at times. Um, so, you know, have some fun. You got the button. Don't press the red button. Press the red button for God's Just sakes. Just be careful, okay? There's Always be careful. Blow all your speakers. And buy a new one, there you go. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, I guess from that perspective. Yeah, there's that. Aha, uh-huh, the distortion button. It is the distortion button. It is the launch the speakers in the stratosphere. All right, guys, listen, we're going to get back to it. It is 513. It is almost 6 o'clock, which means at 6 o'clock, you can find us over on the Five Star Car Stereo Network. We are going to be doing the live show, as always. No big deal there. And, of course, tonight is the night. We're going to be giving away the uh, this, this guy right here. Haley's here, so she's going to sign it. So this goes home to somebody today. So, uh, if you haven't entered, eh, you know what? It's okay. Next time, bro. Um, but yes, so this is going home today. The Auditor 10 inch woofer. We're going to give that tonight. So, we'll do that probably at the 6 30 hour, right in the middle of the show, uh, just so that we can make sure everyone has time to get in and join. But yeah, this is going home tonight. I want to thank everyone that has entered. I want to thank Orca, uh, the distributor of Focal here in the United States, for. You know, being being a advertiser with our channel, um, they signed up for another six months or another three months. So we'll see what we have to, in the future, and we'll have some fun with them, and hopefully it'll lead to more giveaways and more cool stuff. So I hope it's you too, but it's random. So we'll have some fun. I think we're gonna pick ten, and then I don't know. We'll we'll go from there. Okay. So it'll be one of the ten out of whatever we got. Right. So pretty cool. All right. All right, guys, thank you so much. We'll see you at 6 o'clock. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, Bye. guys.